This, my friends, is the Super 73 R Brooklyn Performance Street Racer, as the company calls it. But to me, it's a modern day emo ped that looks flat out sexy. Like it literally grabs everyone's attention wherever it goes, whether you like it or not, never fails. Plus, it has an accessible top speed and handling without entering dicey territory either. Now, it's not all bed of roses though, because equipment wise for the money, the Brooklyn is starting to fall behind. So in this video, we're going to check out this sick looking bike in detail and then chit chat about the pros and cons, like why you should buy it or shouldn't buy it. And then I'll give it a gear up score at the end. And I think this is going to be fun, guys. So let's do it. I haven't seen many videos on the R Brooklyn itself, so I hope this helps you out a little bit. This thing runs $3,700 and this is obviously Obsidian. Now there was one colorway that I really like. I think it was some kind of blue, but maybe that's gone because on the website now you have something they call Metallic Aluminum and Dark Earth. Dark Earth was there since uh, rollout and I think there was some kind of baby blue, racer blue kind of thing. But anyways, um, peak power for this, depending on what mode you're in, if you're in off-road, which is the uh, unloaded, everything unlocked is 1200 watts peak anyway from the rear motor right here. Um, there's no motor at the front, obviously. And if you're in class one uh, and three, all the way to three, it maxes out at around 750 watts. So, you know, turning it on to off-road obviously unlocks everything. The range also obviously depends on uh what mode you're in so it's roughly i got around roughly 22 miles off-road mode at 65 percent like cruising at max speed and plenty of hills here in maine here it's flat but uh, most of my area is like hilly so it drains the power pretty quickly anyways this thing is 37.6 kilos by the way it's pretty about 83 grams thereabouts you can see i love the light module this has been revised uh, from earlier r models and it's really awesome this thing is all aluminum and the seat height by the way is about 32 32 inches from the ground so it's ideal for people from five feet three all the way to six feet plus and i think if depending on your ape index that means your arm to your how long your arms is in comparison to your rest of your body if you have a long ape index you'll be super comfortable like myself i am very comfortable i've heard a lot of complaints of people saying that the crank is too short and the hip to leg um, distance to the pedal is really uncomfortable for a lot of people if you read online and watch videos i've i haven't had that problem at all there is no power obviously really from the pedals it's just really for flat road assistance or slight hills because it's only one gear and the derailleur is you know, is there to help out but it's really hard to pedal uh if you're just using this solo without power so <laughs> yeah don't think about it don't think about running out of power lizard tires 4.5 inches at the front and five inch at the back adjustable dampeners uh, in the rear but unfortunately the front is fixed it's it rides too soft for my liking i wish this was adjustable for the price you really should have it so that's kind of a bummer uh, at least the wiring is de decent right here uh, this loaner has tons of miles on this and it's, it looks like it's held up pretty good. Somebody scratched this on the side right there. Uh, but it looks pretty darn solid. There's a lot of uh, areas where you can hang your accessories and mod it and all that kind of such. Uh, the pedals are decent. I wish there was like reflectors at the back. And I'm sure you can, you know, just change it out if you want. The single derailleur right there. Um, there is the tail light. Let me show you the brakes from a distance right here. It's not bad. Decent illumination. I just added a bunch of accessories. To really help me keep safe i like the side mirrors like this one thing i really like seeing is hydraulic brakes for these dual piston tectros front and rear um, but again i think it's so good that it just overcomes the front there's just too much dive for my liking so kind of a thumbs down for that here's the horn right there let me try to show you where the horn is it's pretty loud actually it's pretty nice this is my favorite bit right here the light the light housing is super awesome it's adjustable in height this is my ideal setup so it show it shines the beam uh, properly on the road i wish this was a little bit neater the cabling you know you can probably tie it up a little bit better with more straps but uh, this is how it came out of the box unfortunately um you have chrome molly uh, which is short short for chromium uh, molybdenum uh, handlebars so these are nice. I really like the colorway. Actually, I was kind of concerned that I, I like colored things, not absolutely jet black stuff, but this obsidian looks pretty dope in it. I really like it. The stand, 
I'll tell you what guys, one of my favorite bits is really solid. One of them, it's really strong and stable. I really like that too. Uh, removable battery. Here's the power button by the way and the charging port. One really weird thing and I'll talk more about this later on and this is really one of my downers is unlike a lot of other e-bikes or e-scooters, you need to turn on the power to charge it or press this button, the light comes on and then you plug it in. If you plug it into the charger and this is not on, it absolutely won't charge no matter what. Kind of ridiculous, isn't it? And here's a key slot where you can unlock it to remove the battery in case you want to take it in the house or your office to charge it. Basically an extra insurance for keeping your bike safe. You can lock it up and take your battery with you. It should, it should discourage people from uh, stealing your bike. And man, people want to steal your bike. It's really nice. I love the design of this thing. As you watch these obligatory B-roll of the Brooklyn, a quick history lesson might be in order. Super 73 might be the only e-bike maker with designs that best capture the essence of classic cafe bike racers. When you see bikes like the Brooklyn on the street, your brain automatically subconsciously knows it looks cool, even if you can't necessarily put a finger on why. It just looks dope, right? Well, that Pavlovian familiarity might be down to the whole motorcycle cafe racer history. It gained popularity in the 60s in London where bike owners heavily modded their bikes for speed and handling over short distances and this look remains one of the most popular forms of motorcycle customizations in the world. In that aspect, the R Brooklyn checks many of the boxes that make a classic cafe racer a classic cafe racer. Low slung handlebars? Check. Low seat height? Check. Minimalistic stripped down frame? Check. Large round, low mounted headlights, oh yes, check. No mud guards, no rear chain enclosures, no side panels, check. And the only obvious difference is the motor and bicycle pedals, and more on that next. But looks wise, the R Brooklyn in this black obsidian color totally nails it. It draws attention wherever you go guys, whether stationary or at speed, cops, kids, bros in lifted trucks, they will at least stare or give you the thumbs up. Now. I don't have a motorcycle license, so obviously have never had a chance to participate in that culture. But riding this around, guys, I got my first motorcycle wave, like the motorcycle salute from a Harley dude first, and then another on a BMW R90. I was so happy, and that memory will always stick with me. Personally, I would have liked this bike to go faster, and I think the motor can handle it. But let's be real, the Brooklyn as it is, is fast enough for most people and for most situations. Even though there is one major Achilles heel that I can think of, but I'm saving that for the negatives. Now, when you unlock the off-road level four mode in the app, this bike can achieve speeds around 30 miles per hour with the latest firmware. But riders from states with stricter laws can set it to lower levels directly on the bike's diamond control panel or in the app itself. When it comes to handling, I think balance is pretty good, although I did find the helm a little bit too loose for my liking, which makes placing the bike wherever I want it to accurately somewhat challenging at times. Hydraulic brakes are the bee's knees, I'll tell you what. In fact, I think all e-bikes and all e-scooters should come stock with hydraulic stoppers, especially with the speed and accelerated power they're capable of nowadays. On the Brooklyn, I would say the brakes are a touch grabby, but then again, they offer plenty of confident braking at stop signs like situated literally at the bottom of a hill or especially during emergencies. The widespread, almost Apple-like worship of Super 73 products and also the brand has resulted in a fantastic parts and accessories aftermarket. So if you want to mod your bike with third-party, say, carrier racks or re-upholstered seats, yeah, go for it. Or if you want to go bigger and spend big money, you can do that too. Like you can add new or more batteries for more range or swap out for a giant 5,000 watt motor, things like that. 
Still, one thing I really like about the stock frame itself is it already comes with pre-threaded mounting points everywhere. So basically welcoming you to slap on stuff you already have from your older bicycles or something of your own creation if you wanted to. You know what guys, it is so weird not having the product that I'm talking about on the table like I normally do. If it wasn't for my bad back, I would have totally plunked the bike right here. Yes. But anyways, let's talk about the negatives. There are a couple of areas on the Brooklyn and also in general where I think Super 73 has let basically fame get to its head, namely in the areas of safety and power delivery. And other brands, even cheap Chinese ones, have surpassed the company in this regards, which is why I'm bringing it up right here. At this price, it just boggles my mind why indicator signals, yes, indicator lights aren't stock on the bikes or that Super 73 doesn't even sell them on its own site. Now, at least a little concession with the R Brooklyn, the RX, the S2, and the Adventure series, the company has made it easier for owners to buy third-party plug-and-play lights that connect directly into existing wiring. But my issue is, why do we have to pay more for basic safety items is beyond me. I mentioned earlier that the Brooklyn has enough performance for most scenarios, right? But what I didn't say is how much it sucks at gradients. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Yeah, riding this bike on anything steeper than 8% is really a game of momentum, I'll tell you what. Now, I have to say, charging at speed, I've been able to tackle hills that I feared would give the bike a hard time, such as this crazy one up my street here uh, that is a sustained 25% gradient for about 200 yards. And I know it's not like, say, Lombardi Street in San Francisco, but hey, it was not bad. Now, that being said, Hill climbs from a dead stop is an act of futility and embarrassment because A, you're riding a bloody $4,000 bike, so you shouldn't need to like get down and do the push of shame up the hill. And B, that single gear pedal like sucks balls at offering any sort of propulsion. So the moral of the story, guys, is we need a second motor for added torque delivery. Other brands are doing it. Why can't you, Super 73? Come on. And finally, I wish the R Brooklyn had adjustable front suspension. I'm not 100% sure why it is, maybe because it's marketed as an urban city rider, so not meant for the off-roady stuff, thus they didn't think we needed to fiddle with the struts anyway. It's cool that you can adjust the rears, which makes it more unfortunate at the same time, and again, for the price, that the fronts you can't do diddly squat with it. Honestly, leading up to my time with the R Brooklyn, my expectations had already been set to cautious because I had read enough reviews and forum complaints about how its single hub motor lacks torque and is easily overcome by gradients or mud or ruts, the uncomfortable ride height as well, the pointless pedals among other things. However, what I wasn't expecting is how much I ended up actually enjoying the bike itself. Maybe it's the rebellious cafe racer riding stance. Maybe it's the attractive design. Maybe it's the more than acceptable performance. And maybe it's the huge potential for mods. Or maybe it was all the attention I was getting while riding this thing. And maybe those reasons are exactly why people love these bikes and I'm starting to get the whole hype behind it. But even so, Super 73 really has to take a hard look at giving us more standard kit, especially when you're forking over nearly 4K of your hard-earned cash. I would really like to see things like signal indicators, cruise control, yeah, where's cruise control, twist throttle instead of a thumb throttle, dual motors, and also fast charging, or at least twin charging connector support on the battery. I noticed that there aren't many R Brooklyn video reviews out there or resources, so I hope this video helps you out and points you in the right direction. And if you like my channel, if you like what I do, remember to show your support, thumbs up and subscribe down below. Don't be a moocher, don't just watch and disappear, dang it. And also join the conversation in the comments, we'd love to have you say hi and all that such. And visit me on Patreon as well as my YouTube membership tab right there. Click join and you can see there is just one single tier if you'd like to help me out that way. And remember guys, as I always say, remember to do something loving and kind for somebody in this world because guess what? The world needs it more than ever and it starts with you. I love you all very much. Peace out.